Lady Chillers, uh, the female gothic. Um, this is a talk that I first put together uh, to give a few years ago actually to um, a, a Fear and the Fens um, uh, performance um, and I've slightly adapted it uh, so that um, this, uh, the evening of the 18th will be in two parts. So the first half hour will be going through some of the history and the weird and wonderful byways of uh, female gothic in literature. And then in the second half, I will uh, perform a reading of um, Charlotte Perkins Gilman, um, The Yellow Wallpaper, which um, is really relevant um, to, uh, to uh, some, some of the things that I will be talking about in the female gothic. I would say that um, if I hadn't been a feminist already, researching for uh, the, this particular talk would have turned me into one. It's actually quite um, appalling, actually, some of the things that these women went through, the, uh, you know, the, the, the prejudice um, and the, the, the lives that they led. Uh, and in spite of it all, they kept writing. I mean, it's quite astonishing. Um, even some of our you know, most beloved uh, writers like Edith Nesbitt, she had a terrible life. And I'm sorry to say, mostly um, led into these terrible things by their menfolk, by either feckless husbands or useless brothers or you know, people, you know, menfolk gambling their money away or inconveniently dying at the wrong time. Um, and these women, you know, they had to write to live, to put food on the table, to put food in their children's mouths. They didn't have um, the luxury of, um, uh, like M.R. James, you know, a, you know, a sinecure at a, at a good public school, you know, where they were, you know, fed and watered and, you know, could spend their time writing and studying. You know, they, you know, if they didn't, if they didn't produce writing for which they got paid, they would have starved. Uh, so there is often criticism that um, a lot of the work of these women authors isn't quite up to uh, the quality of um, the likes of M.R. James, which, with which I wholly disagree, of course. Um, but they are, you know, they did not have a classical education. They pretty much had to educate themselves. So these things must be borne in mind. Um, and uh, what I want to do is to bring out some of the aspects of, of uh, the lives of these women, but also to say that Gothic, um, although not entirely, has almost been a female invention. Although the first uh, Gothic novel of, of the type was written by a man, it was quickly taken up by women who absolutely saw the subversive nature of it and the opportunities to talk about the things that really mattered to them and things that affected their lives, but in a, in a slightly covert way. So they weren't sort of flag waving and jumping up and down. They were presenting these things um, you know, from a slightly sideways perspective and thereby getting their message across, uh, which I think is very, very clever. Um, so yes, so it's going to be uh, a quite a surprising evening, I think. I'll be covering quite a lot of ground and uh, then we'll be finishing, as I say, with uh, my favourite stories, which is the yellow wallpaper. So um, audiences uh, can expect um, an evening of, uh, it'll be part lecture, part performance, um, there will be a bar, uh, which I always find, you know, always works very well with the written word. Um, I always uh, tell people if they don't know what I do, I'm like um, Radio 4, uh, Book of Bedtime, but with a gothic slant. So um, you can shut your eyes and just listen to the words, uh, you know, to take yourself off into a, into a fantasy land, um, whatever you want to do. Hopefully it's going to be a very chilled out evening uh, in this lovely venue, which is the Down and Market Heritage Centre, which is our local museum um, and is also used for all sorts of, of small events. Um, uh, I, like to, I do like to use this venue quite a lot because it's great for a small, intimate gathering.